Today on our 2011 Ford van, we will be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Concha Prodigy P3 brake controller, part number 90195. For this install, we will also be using part number ETBC7. The Prodigy P3 is a proportional brake controller that works great for one to four axles. With this being proportional brake controller, it will sense what amount of braking power you need to send to your trailer. It really helps out in emergency braking situations when we need maximum braking power. When we are in a normal braking situation, it applies proper power saving your brakes on your trailer, overall making towing much safer. Compared to a traditional time delayed brake controller, this gives you the exact amount of braking power when you need it. It has a lot of features to customize your towing needs, from preset boost and gain settings for heavier or lighter loads, to memory options if you haul a similar load often. So to begin our installation, we're going to go ahead and mount our adapter plate for our 7 and 4 pole. Now I've already installed the long bracket that this, that this is going to be attached to. Now that part number, 18136. Now all this is is just a plate that wraps around the back of the hitch here and then you have a tube clamp that holds it down. Now with our included hardware, we'll have a bolt, a flat washer, we'll go up from the bottom and we'll take our star washer and our nut and we're going to do the same thing with this other side. Now we'll take a Phillips screwdriver, go ahead and tighten that down. So now we'll take our four pole and seven pole. You're going to feed the wires right through this split in the bottom of the bracket. Then we're going to take the longer bolt and then you're going to have a nut with the star washer already attached to it. And we'll put our nut on the back side. And then we're going to do that same thing with the remaining three holes. Next we'll take a flathead screwdriver and tighten all of our hardware. So this vehicle already has a factory four flat on it. Typically, you could just tie your four flat into it. This one is a little bit corroded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these wires. I'm gonna cut these. I'm just gonna tie these into those. We're gonna strip back some of this here to give us just a little bit of extra wire. Now we'll go ahead and cut this four pole off here. Then we're going to cut this four pole off that's on the adapter plug. And we'll cut our ground. Now we'll strip our wires. Next, I'm going to use heat shrink butt connectors. Now these don't come in the kit, but you can find them on our website. I'm just replacing the existing ones because these are going to be living outside. So these heat shrink butt connectors are just going to provide a little bit more protection from any corrosion, any moisture or anything getting to the wires. Now we're just going to match our wires to our existing wires, plug them in the other end. Now we'll take a heat gun and heat up the ends. Once you've got that done, I'm going to take some electrical tape and wrap them up. I'm going to cut this part of this wire loom off. So what I'm going to do is when I attach my wires to this, these cables here, I'm going to bundle it together and I'm going to add new wire loom so it's all in one. Now we'll take our duplex wire. And if you notice it has black and white in the center, we're going to split this coating to separate those two wires. Now we're only going to strip back about this much. Now we're going to run it over top our hitch. We'll go ahead and strip the ends. Now we're going to be tying our black wire into our black wire and our white wire into our blue. Now when you get this kit, these connectors or these butt connectors are already installed, so I'm not going to cut them off. Crimp them down. Next, I'm going to tape them up. Now this purple wire is going to be for reverse lights. 
This customer is not getting that at this moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave the butt connector on here in case they wanna put it on at a later time. I'm just gonna roll it up here. I'll tap, tape it to my other wires just to hold it in place. I'm gonna tape all the way up and around. Kinda of give the wires a little bit of extra protection and make it look a little bit nicer. You don't have wires hanging out all over the place. Now we're gonna take our wires, pull them up, and I'm gonna zip tie them right there. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna run all this wire up to the front. Let me get it done real quick and I'll show you how I did it. What I did is I found some existing wiring from the factory and I just followed it and zip tied to it. Over top the frame here, over top of this frame bracket here, same thing here. And I just filed along the frame here, right along the frame and existing wiring. Behind the heat shield, you want to stay away from anything hot or moving out of the heat shield here. I zip tied to the top of this bracket. And then what I did from the top is I took an airline tube, found me a line that's away from anything moving up there or anything hot, dropped it down, took some electrical tape, taped my cable that I want to go up to that airline tube. Now I can go up top and just pull that up and it'll follow the line of the airline tube. From here, I'll just pull my airline tube up. Once you get your wire up, I would suggest double checking underneath the vehicle one more time to make sure that you're not snagged on anything and you have all of your wire pulled to the top. Now we're gonna take our 40 amp fuse. And if you look, you have a copper and a silver colored peg. The copper one says battery. The silver color says auxiliary. So we need to find a mounting place for this. I think that this would be a good enough place for this one. So we're gonna take a quarter inch socket and our self-tapping screw. And you want to make sure wherever you are running your screw, you don't have any wires behind it that you're going to run into. Now we're going to strip back this duplex to get this black wire out. From here, we're going to leave our white wire to length. Our black wire, we're going to measure we're gonna put a ring terminal on the end and it's gonna hook up to this bottom post here. And we wanna hold on to this extra wire that we just cut off because we're gonna be using it in just a second. We'll strip our black wire. We'll take one of our small ring terminals, crimp it down. We're gonna hook that onto our bottom post. Replace your nut. Now we're going to take the extra black wire that we cut off, we'll strip one in. Again, we're going to put the small ring terminal on it, crimp it down. We're going to take this in and we're going to hook it onto our top post, our post that's going to our battery. Now I'm going to take my power wire and just kind of kind of Run it back along this back wall here, this existing wiring. I'll find me a good spot to bring it over to my battery. Now I'm gonna zip tie this wire along there just so it stays in place. From here, I'm gonna cut my wire down to size. We're gonna add a larger ring terminal. Now you're going to need some extra wire for this next part. You can find it on our website using part number 12-1-1. I'm going to get it, use about 10 feet. I may not use all of it, but 10 feet is a good reference point to uh, give you plenty to run inside the vehicle. First, we're going to strip back the end of our wire. We're going to put another large ring terminal on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other end I'm going to follow my line from my first wire that I put in. I'm going to go back over that same spot. From here, instead of running it directly across this, I'm going to run it underneath where this existing wiring is. Now we're going to take our 20 amp circuit breaker. 
So the wire we just ran from our battery, it's gonna be hooked to this bottom post or this copper colored post. First, we have to mount this. I'm thinking right in here is gonna be a good location. Next, we're gonna cut our wire to size. I'm gonna hold on to the extra wire, strip the ends. Take another one of your small ring terminals, rip it down, and then we're gonna hook this onto the copper post that's running to the battery. Now we're gonna take our wire that we cut off, we're gonna strip the end of that. We're gonna take our other small ring terminal, put it on the end. And this one, is gonna hook on to the silver colored post. And you wanna make sure your ring terminal is facing that way because we're gonna run these into the inside of the vehicle. Once we have our connections made, we'll take a 3 8 socket and we'll tighten everything down. And you just wanna snug these up to where your wires aren't gonna move. You don't wanna tighten them down so much that you crack that. There's a grommet back here on the firewall we're gonna to need to go through. In order to get to it, we're gonna to have to remove this tank. We're gonna use an eight millimeter socket. We're gonna remove these three bolts right here. So now we'll just carefully pick this jug up here. Swing it over. And we're just gonna set it right here out of the way. Now our two wires that we have hanging loose are gonna be running right through this grommet down here to go inside the vehicle. Now we'll just take a razor knife. We'll just put a little slice right here and open that up. Now I'm just gonna take a screwdriver. I'll put it inside the hole here. Just kind of move it around and see if I hit anything. If it's clear, we can take some airline tubing. You can also use a coat hanger or wire to run through that grommet there to gain access to the inside. Now we're going to take the other end of our airline tube and we're going to tape our wires to it so that we can pull it through the grommet. Now the grommet's difficult to see, but pushing the airline tube through, you can see the general area of where it's come out. Now we'll go ahead and pull the rest of it through. Now this is going to hook to the factory wiring and then to the back of the brake controller. To find the factory wiring, it's going to be right in this area behind the dash. In order to get to it, if you take just a plastic trim panel tool and pop this out here, you'll just pry it out. Your wiring is either going to be connected on the back of this or somewhere in this area. Now we've already pulled our wiring from up behind the dash down to the bottom here. What we need to do from here is we need to test it to see if we are getting power to the factory tow package wiring. In some cases, you'll have full power to these. Other cases, you only have your brake lights and your ground. So now with the key on, so there we have our brake light. So at this point, none of these other wires are hooked up. So now what we'll do is we're gonna take our adapter plug, we'll plug it into our wiring harness, and then we're gonna test this end to see which two wires we're getting power to. So there's our brake, which is gonna be our red wire, and our white wire is gonna be our ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip tie my wires right along the bottom of this here. Now you want to make sure you don't zip tie it to this plastic piece in case somebody goes to take it off. You don't want your wires connected to it. Right on the other side of this, there's a square hole in this metal bracket that stays in place. From here we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut our wires down. Now we're going to leave ourselves a little bit of extra so when we tie into our connector here, and we'll be able to tuck it up behind the dash. We'll cut our wires. I'm going to take this wire, peel off this electrical tape, 
I'm going to pull back this netting, this covering. We've already determined that our red wire is our brake lights, white wire is our ground. The blue wire is going to connect to our brake system or our white wire here that we ran from our blue wire off of our seven pole. And then this wire, we're going to hook into our black wire on this connector that's running from our battery to give our brake controller power. We're going to cut our black wire. And we're going to take our black wire, trim it back. And we're going to tie these two together. Now I'm going to take one of the buck connectors that's actually included in the kit, and I'm going to use it right here. The other end of the black wire, and you're going to put it in the other end of the buck connector, and we'll crimp that down. Make sure you have a good connection. And we're going to do the same thing to the blue wire with the white. Next, I'm going to take some electrical tape and go around my connection points. Now I'm just going to clean this up, put some electrical tape, cover up my wires. So now we'll take our plug and plug into our existing wiring. So we're going to be mounting the brake controller right about here. So now to make it a little easier, we're going to go ahead and pull this panel down. We want to make sure there's no wires in the area where we're going to be drilling. So now we'll hook up to the back of our brake controller. We're going to feed it up through the bottom. We're just going to match it up, plug it in, set it in place. Now we can take all of our extra wiring and hide it up behind the dash. Once we have everything connected inside, we can get everything buttoned up underneath the hood. Get our canister back in place here. So now we'll take our two wires with our ring terminals and we'll hook them up to our positive side of our battery. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket. Once you put your ring terminals on, replace your nut and tighten it back down. As you can see, our brake controller has power. Now let's go to the back and test out our seven and four way. We'll use an alternate power source and we'll test our connections in the back of the vehicle. Brakes, left turn, right turn, running lights. On the right side, you can see we're getting power from our brake controller. On the left side, it shows how much braking power our trailer is getting from our brake controller. And that will do it for a look at an installation on Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller, part number 90195 on our 2011 Ford. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave a comment if you have any questions.